Even with all of those new electronic gadgets competing for outlet space in our homes and offices, our electricity consumption growth is slowing, mainly due to more energy efficient products and buildings. During the 1950s, electricity demand grew an average of 9% a year, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration. But over the next two decades, our electricity consumption growth rate is expected to trickle to less than 1% per year. But don't get too excited, our energy consumption will still grow by more than 20% over that time. You can see why it is so important that we increase the portion of energy production that comes from clean, renewable resources. The trend is promising. While coal will still be the dominant energy source by 2035, the Energy Information Administration projects that coal's share of the energy pie will decrease by 6%, accounting for 39% of total generation. Renewables, like wind, solar, and geothermal, are slated to rise from 10 to 16% of the total pie, and natural gas will continue its upward trend, with nuclear's contribution decreasing slightly. A number of factors can significantly change these projections, including state policies to increase renewable standards and energy price swings. We have an opportunity for energy utilities to diversify, from just generating and selling power to providing comprehensive energy services, selling both power and management expertise. Companies like Excel are already catching on, creating services like home energy audits and wind credits in your utility bill. This is fine for now, but what happens in 50 years when we've gone from a few houses in the neighborhood with their own solar panels or wind to a third of the houses? Instead of a one-way power flow to customers, many of us could feed into the system, powering each other. The power companies stand to lose a lot of revenue from these dwindling energy sales. They'll find themselves in a similar situation to the U.S. Postal Service, as email and electronic communications surge. It's a long way before we'll be fully self-powered. In the meantime, we will still need a well-maintained power transfer system, but how will communities generate the funding to pay for it? Short term, power companies have little incentive to initiate this transformation, but policymakers should work on ways now to change billing so as not to shock the system with reactive service fees in the future, while still encouraging efficiency efforts. Our electricity system is changing, now is the time to accelerate planning. For Minnesota 2020, I'm Energy Fellow Will Nissen.